Very the wild, wild west. Well, John wants to get good evening. Thank you. Uh, as I said, five years on Broadway with your show, uh, of your magnificent Night Night movie. How was tonight for you? It was amazing. It's like, you know, I don't know if I'm a great, great, great grandfather, but, you know, I came overseas this time to see a show that has a cast that is so tight. Every joke works. There's jokes I don't know if I heard them before in it. You know, they can all act, they can sing. I'm, I'm just amazing. It was very, very moving to me to remember all the people I started with here and, and thinking about writing it in my bed of my old slum apartment and thinking about a lot of people that helped create a lot of things that are still in it that are no longer here. So to imagine to me it was a great tribute to, uh, to also to Broadway, but they took my movie and what Mark and Scott and Jerry and Jack did was turn it into something completely different. But, uh, Certainly they understand in England. They went through this here. I mean, Rhythm and Blues stars moved here right when the Beatles came over and ended their careers. They moved to England because they got better respect. And, and well, as you say, I mean, the spirit of the film, I mean, well, the, just the John Waters spirit in general is so there, which is you know, not, not an easy thing to transfer to the story. Well, Margot Lyon told me in the very beginning, when she came to me the very first day, that we're going to keep you involved, we want your spirit, and we want you involved in the very beginning. And she kept her word, as did everybody else. I thought Michael Ball, because everybody oh, was stunned when he'd been cast in this film. Yeah. Um, I heard even there was a news story yesterday that some fans had asked for their money back because they actually didn't realize it was there. I know, I know. Uh, That's great. Is, you know? The very first day on the set when we made the movie, I didn't recognize Devine. I'd never seen him in the full costume, and he was standing next to me, and, and, then, and then I realized that he looked like the other women in the neighborhood. So Michael plays it great because in the beginning he looks scary, like a, you know, like what they look like in Baltimore, to be honest. And, you know, and then he comes out of that can, beautiful, you know. So, uh, I, well, comes out of a hefty hideaway. He's beautiful from then on. I think. But he pitched it so perfectly, I thought, because he, he could have overplayed it. So no, he didn't overplay he it. Played it as, he played it as a woman, didn't he? Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, they all have. I think that's the one thing about the role. Is he made it his own. He's not like any of the other Ednas, and I don't think any of them are like the other Ednas. They were all really good actors and kept that. But none of them play it like a drag queen. There's nothing the matter with playing it like a drag queen, but this is a part, as Divine said in the beginning, nobody can call me a drag queen. Again, what drag queen would allow themselves to look like this? And that's the point. Not a lot of drag queens put on a, you know, a house dress and scuffies. But I do think, uh, uh, very rarely as well, I think in the, in the tenor of his voice, there was definitely a very respectful tribute to Divine now. Uh, I think it was a respectful tribute to everybody involved in all the projects, you know? Uh, you know, Divine, you know, got the most greatest revisionist reviews when everything came out, but the movie, the play. And they were, he got very good reviews when the movie came out too, but he died a week later. So, um, but he got better reviews each, each, each new reinvention of the movie. They're more revision, but I'll take good reviews any way you can get them. And of course, what we have is a breakthrough star here tonight as well, which is in Leanne. I know, that I think, God, I actually think of a role that is going to make the fourth girl star, and I think it is. She deserves to be, and I think she was tonight. Well, there's been a lot of talk as well about uh, the curse of the Shaftesbury Theatre lately. Show See, I heard that. I love that idea. Yes that we can break a curse because, you know, I'm a Satanist. No, I'm kidding. But I, I love the idea that, uh, isn't Hairspray about somebody that breaks a curse that, that has, you know, a fat girl getting the guys the same way as a theater that hasn't had a hit getting one. It goes right along with the spirit of the whole thing. Well, I think fairly you know, incontrovertibly that curse is broken. It's, it's, it's just going to run forever. I mean, I, I just was absolutely so uplifted by it, really. Uh, and there's no reason for me to say this in any kind of crazy way. It's an incredibly interesting show. Um, uh, and I love it. I wonder if there was at any point when it was mooted to you to actually turn it into a musical if you ever kind of went, well, no. No, but it, well, it had been optioned before to be a musical. It was optioned to be a TV series where they did a pilot. And it was optioned actually by Scott Rudin to be a musical. So um, it didn't happen, but it finally did happen. So you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen in America or anywhere, you know, in show business. Now Crybaby is opening on Broadway. So, you know, I, I'm involved very heavily in that right now. So you never know. So what next polyester? I, I think, yeah, I think on ice. Pink Flamingo's probably... No, that probably should be an probably. opera. <laughs> the fat lady sings and eats dog shit at the end. Yeah. All right, well, I'll Okay? All right.